Apple has released the new watch OS 26. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 new updates and features that you can start using now. We got things like an AI workout buddy. we got the notes app and a lot more. Also make sure to stay at the end. There are two bonus items and they're bonus items because 12 new Apple Watch features didn't sound as good as 10. Before I get into the list, welcome to the channel. Here, I try to help you get more out of your tech and cover the latest in tech. So if you're into these kind of videos, you like Apple devices or the smart home, definitely make sure to subscribe, check out future videos. Also, at the end of this video, I will put a link to uh, my thoughts on the latest Apple Watch releases that'll be out in a couple of days. Number one is the new liquid glass OS update. Apple this year has updated all their operating systems to the new liquid glass, and this brings a more glass-like look to the operating system buttons and menus and control center, all those things uh, tend to look like they're glass overlaid on whatever's behind it. Personally, I like the new look. It definitely has a more modern look to it. It is definitely more noticeable on an iPad, iPhone, or Mac OS, but it's on here too. Number two is updates to watch faces. Every year, Apple will bring out some new watch faces and they'll do updates to uh, some of their previous versions. For example, the photo watch face now can be set up to shuffle your featured photos and the time on there can uh, be set up so that it adjusts automatically to whatever the photo is and it has that liquid glass look to it. Apple also redesigned the watch face gallery into collections so that you can pick a watch face based on a category like health and fitness. Better for discovery and customization. Here are some of the new watch faces that they added this year. They actually removed a few watch faces. Number three is smart stacks. And smart stacks are going to give you a proactive information and alerts on the Apple Watch. For example, if you go to the gym, it may open up in the workout app. It'll also give you little notifications at the bottom based on location and things you frequently use in that location. Or if you open up the camera app, you'll have the remote option pop up at the bottom of the screen. Apple's also opened opening this up for third-party apps with your permission. You can let it uh, notify you. Maybe you get to the coffee shop and it uh, opens up their app so you can charge your Starbucks onto your car. So we should see more of those things popping up with time. Number four is the AI Workout Buddy. And what this does is if you use the Workout Buddy, it can look at your health and fitness information and all this stuff is done on device, but it can uh, give you motivation. It'll analyze the data from from past workouts, some of your metrics such as heart rate and distance and all of that to help give you motivational insights. So if you have it set up to run two miles and you're coming up to mile one and uh, it can help give you some encouragement. It'll give you a little pep talk and motivational updates like you're running 10% faster than uh, last week. And when your workout buddy talks to you, you get that happy, positive tone. So it's never gonna tell you that you're going a lot slower and get your butt going, none of that. This works with certain workouts such as running, walking, cycling, strength, training and some others. Now the workout buddy does require an Apple Watch Series 9 or later, an Ultra 2 or later. And the reason why is it's the Apple intelligence that's needed for that and the on-device Siri. Number five is the new workout app redesign. Now when you look at the workout app, in the four corners you have different choices. In the top right-hand corner, if you click on that, you'll have your goals and targets where you can click on the goals and do you want it to be time-based? Do you want it to be based on distance or calories burned? In the bottom left hand corner, you could have it autoplay media. And when you turn that on, you can have it pick playlists for you based on the type of workout you're doing, or you can choose the kind of media yourself. If you go to the bottom right hand corner, that's where you'll find the workout buddy. You can turn that on. You could get alerts for heart rate, time, splits. It'll do custom workouts and give you your target alerts. And in the left hand corner, you can see your workout views. So you can pick which metrics are shown. You uh, metrics one, metrics two, you could hit include and uh, you 
you can edit those to pick which metrics will show up by default on the watch. Number six is a new gesture that you can use. It's a flick wrist. And that flick wrist is going to dismiss notifications. If you have a call coming in, it can mute it. If you're in the app view, you could flick it and it'll go back to your watch face. So pretty much anywhere you are with the app or anything incoming, an alarm, for example, uh, you can dismiss it and go back to the watch face. One of the gestures that came out last year is double tap. And with this, you need a series 10, 11, an Ultra 2 or the new Ultra 3 to be able to utilize either of these gestures. With the double tap, when you're looking at the watch face, if you do a double tap, it's going to show you your different widgets. And each time you double tap, it's going to scroll through your different widgets. And if you flick it, it's going to go back to the home screen. I like to use this plain basic watch face that has no widgets on it. So using that gesture will bring up three widgets so I can quickly get to messages, my workout app, or I can access my car. So if I wanna cool down the car, hit that, or unlock the car, just hit that and it'll load right into the app. If you're in the app view and like me, you use the list view, each time you double tap, it's going to scroll through. So it, it basically acts like the digital crown. And I never really used uh, this gesture until I started using the flick with it. And uh, I like it now. Number seven is the sleep score. And this, like the fitness circles and trying to close them, having this sleep score is meant to encourage you to try to get better sleep. What it'll do is it'll rank your sleep duration give you points on whether you go to bed early, you go to bed on time, you go to bed late, you're gonna lose some points. And it'll also uh, base it on how many times you woke up. So seeing the score may encourage you to uh, go to bed earlier so you can get that score up. Like today, I woke up and I saw I got a 95. I went to bed a little early. I ended up sleeping seven hours and I didn't wake up that much. Good score going on there. If you scroll down further, you can also see uh, your bedtime. You could set that and you could set an alarm. Personally, I just have it set up so that there's the bedtime, so it encourages me to go to sleep, and then I do my alarm through my phone. Next is message app improvements. There is now live translations, and you could set it up so that it shows you either the language that you're typing the message in only, or you can do English and the language. So for example, I can set it up so it translates to Italian and anything I type and when I send the message, it's going to show my message on top in English and then on bottom, it's gonna show me Italian. When the other person receives it, you, they'll see Italian on there. And I think depending on how they set it up, they may see English too, or it may automatically send English, I don't know. I've just been sending the messages to myself to see how it works. Some of the, the supported languages are English, French, Spanish, I know I tried Italian, you got German, Japanese, and more out there. I haven't looked at the whole list. You are gonna need to have a supported Apple Watch and a supported phone. So you'll need this Series 9 or higher, the Ultra 2 or higher, and you'll need an AI supported phone such as the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 15. 15 Pro Max or newer. Other updates include smart replies. So based on what uh, the message is, it'll adjust uh, what smart reply you could just hit quickly. You can also change the background of your text, which it's, I like it. It's cool. Everyone can have their own background. You know who you're talking to or sending a message to. You can also do polls, uh, poll responses. So if someone starts a poll on where do you guys want to eat tonight, you can just set it, uh, hit it from your watch. And you can do, um, quickly, you could do the reactions on the watch too. So if someone sends you a message, you could just hold it down, give it a thumbs up or one of the other emojis. It'll also offer up smart actions and messages. So for example, if you're out somewhere, you put an address, you can share your location or do find my option pop up and you could just select that quickly. Number nine is one of the ones I like 
like. It's a notes app. I use notes all the time and it's cool to be able to start a new note or open up an existing note and add to it using the scribble, the keyboard or dictation. And um, so if I get an idea and I'm working on a video, I can just open up my notes app because I make all my notes uh, within Apple Notes. And uh, God, I've said notes way too many times, but I can go through and make adjustments there. So it is nice to have that option finally. We've had reminders, emails, and a lot of other stuff. And this was a nice addition. Number 10, this is one that I like and use more now. It is improvements to the control center. You can take advantage of different widgets, different buttons within control center to access things or to trigger actions you might use frequently. So if you want to start a new note, you can have a button there and just hit new note. Or you could put a scene there for the smart home, like mine set up so that I could just turn on my office lights quickly. There's also some third party support. Not a lot of third party support yet, but for me, I have for my car, I can just hit the fan on there to start cooling down the car. Another one I like is that I can take advantage of the little camera remote app. So if I hit that, it's going to open up my camera and it's going to give me the remote so that I can take a picture or start a recording. I like being able to use the control center because I use a watch face that doesn't have complications on it. And plus, I, if, if I did use complications, I don't need to hit it and go to the app and then trigger something within it. So I don't need to open my cars app and then select a cool down in it. I can just go straight to that action. Now the first bonus update is to the phone apps. You have smart filtering and you have your screening options in there. You also have live captions. When you have a supported phone, a transcription of what the iPhone records is sent to your Apple Watch so you can read what's being said at the same time. Now, if you are using call screening or hold assist, it'll work with English, French, uh, Spanish, and more, but it will need the Series 9, 10, 11, or an Ultra 2 or higher. Now, the second bonus one is adaptive notifications. The Apple Watch will take, will factor in the sound going on around you and adjust the notification volume. So if you are somewhere loud, it'll bump that sound up, but if you're somewhere that's quiet and you don't wanna disturb people, it'll quiet down that notification. Now, this is a feature I've never used, and the reason why is that I keep my watch in silent mode all the time. With that haptic feedback, if a notification notification comes in, I feel the tap. If it's a phone call, feel multiple taps or messages coming in. So it's kind of no reason to have that alert coming in at any point where others can hear it. Another bonus is the hypertension notifications. The Apple Watch will use the heart rate sensor to determine over time if you have possible hypertension. Now this only works with this Series 10 Series 11, Ultra 2, and Ultra 3. Now, are there any of these features that you're excited about and wanna use? Let us know in the comment section. Now, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing, check out future videos. If you can, give this one a thumbs up. It definitely helps the channel out. Next, you could check out my thoughts, my initial thoughts on the Apple Watch Series 11 and Ultra 3. If you just bought an Apple Watch last year or the year before, you might not wanna upgrade. It may not be enough for you. If you're getting your first watch or you have an old one, you'll see that these could be some good updates. I'll see you in that video or another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.